It's February 2019, and this is WOW Signal Burst 32. Become a Boyajian star scientist in your spare time. Hi, this is Paul Carr, and if you follow this podcast on Twitter at Podcast Wow, you already know what this is about. I'm here to recruit people who want to learn more about how modern astronomy is done and make a real contribution to understanding the mystery of Boyajian star. If you want to know more about Boyajian star, or Tabby star as we used to call it, we have a number of previous episodes that go over the basics. And if you go to wowsignalpodcast.com, we'll have a bunch of links to those bursts and episodes. Probably the most important is Tabby's star for the perplexed part one. I would encourage you to listen to that and we will only briefly summarize here why this star is interesting. The existence of the star has been long cataloged and appears on photographic plates more than 130 years old. It just happens to be one of the many stars monitored by NASA's Kepler Space Telescope, which stared at a section of sky in the constellation Cygnus in the hope of seeing planets pass in front of their host star, causing a subtle but repeatable dip in brightness. The primary Kepler mission ended in 2013, and in 2015, a discovery of a group of citizen scientists called Planet Hunters was announced. One of the Kepler stars with the Kepler catalog number 8462852 was exhibiting dips that were anything but subtle. About 20% of this bright star's light had been blocked in one event that lasted several days. After some follow-up observations, all the easy explanations had failed, and the only ones left on the table seemed pretty exotic. Had we actually found evidence of an advanced alien civilization harvesting energy from the star? It turns out that hypothesis had major issues as well, so we had no idea what was causing the strange brightness variations, and in 2016, the mystery deepened. Louisiana State astronomer Brad Schaefer took a hard look at the old photographic place from Harvard and found evidence that the star had been brighter 100 years ago. A few months later, Ben Monte and Joshua Simon revisited the Kepler images and found the star had been gradually dimming during much of the time that the Space Telescope was watching it. Since then, corroborating plates have been found that show a similar rate of dimming. Thanks to crowdfunded telescope monitoring, we've also seen more dips, the biggest of which was last year. So there are two things going on with this star, the big short duration dips in brightness and the longer term trend. And we tend to think they are related, although maybe they're not. What we are talking about from here on is the slow, gradual dimming that Brad Schaefer first reported. We want to get a handle on that, not just how fast it's dimming, but whether it dims at different rates and different colors. The answer to that question is an important clue as to what kind of material was blocking the star. Okay, that was a very short summary. If any of that was news to you, I hope you go back and watch Tabby's TED Talk and listen to our other podcast episodes about the star to fill in the details, because the next move is up to you. Dr. Boyajian has taken the initiative to work with the good folks at the Las Cumbres Observatory Network to set aside some telescope time for observations of the star. These observations will be made available for analysis by citizen scientists. That's you and me. Like most citizen science projects, this will require some training to get moving forward. If you've ever done CosmoQuest or Galaxy Zoo, you know what I'm talking about. This project, as much as any I've seen, really lets you get in with both elbows and see from the inside how serious astronomy gets done. It's a bit more complicated, but we will break it down into small steps that anyone can follow. It's learning by doing. What we'll be doing is taking calibrated images from the Las Cumbres telescopes. These images are Boyajian star and the area of sky right around it. We'll use free software to analyze the images in two different colors, 
plot the resulting brightness measurements, and look for long-term trends. The results really could help us solve the mystery of what is going on with Voyager and Star. And you can be one of the scientists to make that happen. The way to get started is to go over to Reddit, sign up for an account if you don't have one yet, and go over to the KIC8462852 underscore analysis subreddit, and please introduce yourself. There will be a link in the show notes for this first. No question is considered too elementary, and we will be happy to answer any and all. In no time at all, you will have real astronomical images up on your computer and will be running real astronomy software to measure the brightness of this enigmatic object. I hope to see you over there soon. Please check the wiki to get started, but if that doesn't help, feel free to make a text post to state your question or questions. This has been Burst 32 of the WOW Signal Podcast. This episode was written and produced by Paul Carr with music by DJ Spooky. The WOW Signal is released under the Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike License.